Joseph Kabila's unusual rise to power and his rule of the Congo is a story that is as fascinating as it is complex. On January 16, 2001, the Democratic Republic of the Congo's President Lauren Desiree Kabila was sitting in his office at his marble palace in Kinshasa, at the capital where none of his bodyguards entered drew his pistol aimed at Kabila and fired several times the news broadcast, then reviewed the successor as his 29-year-old son Joseph Kabila, who had yet to make a name for himself. Of a few words and was a mystery to foreign diplomats and the Congolese public alike, but having marched across the country as part of his father's AFDR forces as they toppled Mobutu's government, he enjoyed legitimacy among the military and his father's close confidence, which is why they chose him to be his father's successor. This is the story of Joseph Capilla's ascension to power and his 18-year reign as president of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Joseph Kabila Kabangi's origins, including his parentage and place and date of birth, have long been a source of contention, and in the absence of an irrefutable birth certificate, rumors and many conspiracies about Joseph Kabila's origins have persisted. Joseph Kabila and his twin sister Janet were born on June 4, 1971, to Laura and Desiree Kabila and their mother Saifamania in Ankoro, a small town on the Congo River in North Katanga. According to some reports, he was born on December 4, 1971, at Hirobora, Lorne Kabila's guerrilla headquarters in the DRC's Fizi territory of South Kevil. His mother, Saifamania, was one of Leron Kabila's three wives. She was from the Bangu Bangu tribe in the eastern Congo's Manima province. Although some have claimed for years that she was a Tutsi from Rwanda, many of Joseph Kabila's detractors argued that he was, in fact, a foreigner. Many years later, Joseph Habila, most notably the leader of the opposition ETI and Chizkiti, accused Joseph of not being Lauren Kabila's legitimate son. The late 18th argued that Joseph was in fact of London origin, an accusation that carried some weight in a country still reeling from an invasion of Rwandan forces in what became known as the Congo Wars. Lauren Kabila moved his family to Tanzania in the 1970s after years of leading an unsuccessful rebel movement in Fiji South Kivul against Sarin dictator Mobutu. At this point, Lauren Kabila was a wanted man and saw the Kabila family live discreetly in exile in Uganda and Tanzania to avoid the attention of Mobutu's intelligence service. They pretended to be members of the Fifa people, a small ethnic group from southwest Tanzania. People who were aware Joseph Kapila from that time described him as an intelligent, sporty young man who was passionate about cars and had a great admiration for revolutionary heroes like Thomas Sankara Chef Guevara and Yerbisvini Joseph Kapila received his primary and secondary education in Tanzania, where he learned to speak English at a young age. He was also fluent in Swahili, though not in Lingala, the language spoken in Congo's capital Kinshasa after completing primary and secondary school. Young Joseph Kabila spent three years in the Rwandan military before continuing his education. In 1996, Joseph Kabila had just started university in Uganda when his father summoned him to assist in the rebel war against then-president Mobutu Sesiko, which became known as the First Congo War. Lauren Desiree Kabila led the Alliance of Democratic Forces for the Liberation of Congo, a rebel group that sought to end Mobutu's dictatorship in the era Mobutu had been in power since 1965. During the war, Joseph Kabila collaborated with James Cabaret, a prominent Rwandan figure who was the chief military strategist in Lauren Kabila's rebel AFDL at the time, Desired Yam Joseph was then 25 years to take part in military operations on Congolese soil led by AFDO forces, with the, the Rwandan army cabaret said of his protege that Joseph Kapila had the most difficult time learning how to fight behind Lauren Kabila's AFDO, stood the, the Rwandan Patriotic Front, Uganda's National Resistance Movement, and Angola's MPLA, as well as the Eritrean People's Liberation Front and the Burundian and Tanzanian governments, provided firepower and diplomatic support.
The members of this coalition of liberation movements each had their own motives for wanting to topple Mobutu. This coalition sealed the fate of Mobutu and Lauren Desiree Kabila, announced in May of 1997 from Lubumbashi that he was assuming the presidency of the republic following the AFDO's victory and Lauren following Desiree Kabila's ascension to the presidency. Young Joseph Kabila went on to receive additional training at the PLA National. Meanwhile, Lauren Kabila's assistants from various nations came with strings attached, most notably from two of his ostensible friends, Rwandan President Paul Kagam and Ugandan President Yuri Musvini. But Congolese people felt profound resentment over the Rwandan and Ugandan presence and influence in their country. In July 1998, amid deteriorating relations with Rwanda, President Kabila dismissed London General James Cabaret from his position as Army Chief of Staff and ordered Rwandan soldiers to leave the DRC. In turn, Kabila's refusal to meet the expectations of his former London and Ugandan France prompted the Second Congo War. Angola, Namibia, Chad, and Sudan, and the other controlled by the armed wing of what was known as the RCD, the Iranian Army, the Ugandan Army, and the Burundian Army. In addition to these forces, the MLC, led by Jean-Pierre Bember, and the RCD KNL occupied other parts of the country. The Second Congo War precipitated Joseph Kabila's return to the Congo in August 1998, when he was appointed General Major and Chief of Staff of the Congolese Army at the age of 27. Many people were surprised by his rapid promotion given his short time in the military. In the year 2000, Joseph Kabila became Chief of Staff of the Land Forces and was one of the main military commanders during the Second Congo War. In the beginning of 2001, Joseph Kabila's life changed dramatically. On January 16th of that year, his father Lauren Kabila was sitting in his office at his Marble Palace in Kinshasa when one of his bodyguards shot him several times. Lauren Kabila's advisors scrambled to react to the public attack and arranged for his dead body to be flown to Zimbabwe under the guise of him receiving treatment. When it became clear that Lauren Kabila's gunshot wounds were fatal, Concord's borders were sealed, its airports were closed, and a curfew was imposed. His close allies met with several other members of the presidential cabinet to decide on a successor. They settled on his son Joseph as the only person who could work together various government and military factions at the time. There had been a lot of bad blood between senior government officials, so appointing Joseph Kabila was the part of least resistance. In other words, this was an appointment that everyone could get behind. Joseph Kabila Kabanj was only 29 years old and had little civilian work experience, having done odd jobs for his father and driving a taxi for this group of Lauren Kabila's advisors and associates selling their choice to other powers. Brokers was not easy to persuade. Other military commanders had to be persuaded as well. But this was not as difficult because Joseph was well known and widely respected within the military. An unexpected obstacle was Joseph Kabila's initial reluctance to accept the offer when his father's advisors asked him to become president. It is said that he was initially very resistant to the idea, most likely because he feared for his life, but he eventually relented and accepted the proposal, and so on January 27, 2001, 11 days after his father's death. Joseph Kabila became the president of the Democratic Republic of the Congo and at the time the world's youngest head of state. The Congolese did not know what to expect from their new president, and they did not know if he was strong enough to hold the country together. Also at the time, many people were dissatisfied with the manner in which Joseph Kabila came to power. They objected to the fact that he was chosen secretly and automatically. Others disapproved of the choice because they were dissatisfied with his father's record as a leader, and others believed that Joseph was easily influenced and a puppet to his father's advisors. Whatever the case, when Joseph Kabila became president, the country faced many challenges as we already alluded. Despite this complicated state of affairs, Joseph Kabila was no pushover. He demonstrated a strong will and recognized that remaining in power could not be left to chance. He made surprising decisions that differed significantly from his father's, including dismissing his father's former advisors and allies. 
Joseph Kabila also began normalizing bilateral relations with key allies, such as the United States, France, Britain, and Belgium, among others. His trip to France, the United States, and Belgium only a week after assuming power increased his legitimacy, both at home and abroad. The words he spoke were well received, and he was given the benefit of the doubt. In his speeches, Joseph Kabila emphasized the importance of restoring peace and strengthening national unity, relaunching the Lusaka Peace Accord, returning to democratic life, and opening up the political system. Joseph Kabila also discussed the importance of organizing and participating in Congolese dialogue, as well as economic liberalization. Kabila also met with rebel groups and the governments of five countries with troops in Congo, Rwanda, Uganda, Zimbabwe, Angola, and Namibia. Political talks were also held between Congolese actors in Lusaka, Zambia, as well as Pretoria and Sun City, South Africa. At a meeting in Zambia in February 2001, Joseph Kabila agreed to start implementing a ceasefire agreement signed in July 1999, but not honored in December 2002. Joseph Kabila was a signatory to the Global and Inclusive Agreement, which was signed on December 16, 2002, to end the war and form a part-sharing transitional government. According to the agreement, the parties agreed to combine their efforts in order to achieve national reconciliation. To that end, they decided to establish a government of national unity, which would eventually organize free and democratic elections after a period of transition, the duration of which was fixed. The power-sharing agreement retained Joseph Kabila as interim president, with four vice presidents, one representing the government, one representing the rebel group RCD Goma, and another representing the Moksif GA. United Nations peacekeepers arrived in the Democratic Republic of the Congo at the end of March 2003 to monitor the ceasefire and troop withdrawal. Kabila's re-election bead was posted by his war-organized political campaign, as well as a January 2011 constitutional amendment that eliminated the second round of 14 in the presidential race, allowing a candidate to win without necessarily having a majority of the vote. However, many Congolese were dissatisfied with Kabila's failure to keep all of his 2006 election campaign promises, and he saw 80 inches of his re-election beat academy was a well-liked and well-supported opposition figure. The political climate leading up to the election was tense and violent due to tensions between the parties, as well as legitimate concerns that logistical challenges would interfere with voting in remote parts of the country. Nonetheless, the elections were held as planned, and preliminary results showed that Kabila was a winner with 49% of the vote, she's a kitty followed with 32%. However, several international monitoring groups described the elections as poorly organized, with numerous irregularities. International observers even reported that some districts had impossibly high turnout rates of more than 99% and that hundreds of thousands of ballots had vanished. We wanted to organize perfect elections. Did we achieve that perfection? Not entirely, were there mistakes? Definitely, just like in any other election. The Archbishop of Kachasa, for his part, declared that the results of the Electoral Commission confirmed neither truth nor justice. Indeed, Joseph Kabila's proclamation as the winner of the presidential elections raised questions about his legitimacy and plunged the Congo into a grave constitutional crisis. However, the results were confirmed by the Supreme Court, and Joseph Kabila was inaugurated on December 20, 2011. In the years since, Joseph Kabila has been the target of protests because it was suspected as early as 2013 that he would not step down at the end of his term in late 2016 and would instead try to find a way to extend his time in office. Joseph Kabila would stay in power until a successor could be elected and installed. Months later, the court granted the Electoral Commission's request to postpone the 2016 elections. The logistical challenges associated with holding the elections were cited as one of the reasons for the delay. After years of speculation about Joseph Kabila's intentions, it was confirmed that he would not be running in the election and would instead support the candidacy of Emmanuel Ramazani Shadari. 
Despite the fact that the elections were held in most parts of the country and under generally peaceful conditions, there were reports of problems with the voting process and vote tabulation. When the results were announced a week and a half later, Felix Chiskedi, the son of Exia where he died in 2017, was declared the winner, followed closely by Martin Fayulu, another opposition candidate Shedari came in third. Following that, Martin Fayulu and others accused Felix Chiskedi and Joseph Kapila of helping to make a deal to secure the former's election victory in exchange for protecting the latter and his associates Martin Fayulu filed a constitutional challenge, but the court ruled in Jessica's favor. On January 24, 2019, Joseph Kabila Kabange stepped down, handing over power to Felix GCKD in the first peaceful transfer of power in Congo since the country's independence in 1960. This marks the end of Joseph Kabila's 18-year rule over the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video. Cheers.